Hello, everybody. Welcome back to another episode of Bear Down Ballers here on the field of 68. I'm Ryan Wall, joined once again by Jordan Pollock. And Jordan, this past weekend, Arizona's six-game winning streak did come to an end, sadly. They lost on Thursday by three points to Washington State, but they won by over 10 points on Saturday to Washington. But first, how are you doing today? Doing great, man. Doing great. Just the day before uh, our game up in McHale North. So I, I'm excited. I'm excited for the week. Yeah, we'll, we'll get into that on the back end of the show. But to start it off, like I mentioned, for the second time this year, Arizona fell to Washington State by three points, sadly. And it was kind of a heartbreaker. Arizona was winning you know, during parts of this second half, it was pretty much a toss up, up and down game throughout the whole entire game, first and second half. And then late in the game, we'll start there. That's when Jade, uh, Jalen Wells, who was amazing for Washington State, six for 10 from three, 27 points, hit the game winner, the then game winner, three pointer and one and a four point play made ours or made Washington state lead by one point. And then Caleb love had the ball in his hand was driving to the basket. Looked like he was going to dish it out on the, the wing and it was rolled to travel. And then Arizona ended up losing that one. Uh, what were your thoughts of how the end of the game played out here? Yeah. Um, I think you do. You, they did one of the things you never do in crunch time in a close game foul a three point shooter because sometimes that ball goes in and Jalen Williams was on another level 60% from three. He just couldn't miss. He just couldn't miss. It was, it was that kind of night for him. Um, outside of that, I thought defensively they, they played pretty, pretty well. Um, they held rice to two of 12. I thought they did a great job against him. Um, he, he was in foul trouble through some of the middle part of the game that kept him on the bench in the second half. Um, but the, defensively, I, I didn't think they did a terrible job. Wells just kind of went crazy. Sometimes that happens. Um, and yeah, just, just some of the fallacies they had offensively in the last minute of the game. I think they had a six Oh run for Washington state, which all credit to Washington state. Kyle Smith has done a great job with that team. Um, probably very likely to finish top two, wherever spot they land, um, in the regular season of the pac 12. And they, they've, I think they have a really big shot to make some noise just with some of the, some of their size and, and the athleticism that they had. Um, they they forced a lot of turnovers and got some, some pretty quick, pretty quick points. I, I was, I was happy that Arizona kept the turnover margin pretty close. They only lost that by two. Um, Washington state had nine turnovers and Arizona had 11. Um, outside of that, I, I thought it was a great game. It was fun. It, it sucked to see Arizona kind of just, fumble the last minute but sometimes that's just the way the cookie crumbles yeah i agree it was a very fun game to watch but the first thing getting back to the first thing you said and to me it's the number one rule in bat or at, you know in late game situations it's the number one rule in crunch time what don't you do you don't Five, foul three point, a yep. three point shooter you never you, you never foul them and that's when that happened i knew it just Oh, it's just, I mean, I knew when Wells had the ball, he just had fire in his hands of the whole team. And I was nervous when he took that. And it just seems like to me, Arizona is something that I didn't think was going to gonna be the case early on in the season because so many different Arizona players scored the ball. But now coming down to the end of the season, I think that when the end of the games come and these games are going to be like this one, they're going to be close in March Madness, in the Pac-12 tournament, in the coming weeks in March, I, I think it is true that the Arizona's going to only go as far as Caleb Love takes them. And and by me saying that is is meaning in late in the games, the game is going to be in Caleb Love's hands. And mm -hmm. the, the, don't get me wrong. He this time at the end he did have that travel. Was it a travel? Was it not? We don't know. They rolled it one, but you know, just a possession or two before that, he had an add one when Arizona took the three point lead and went up. You know, three before Wells's three pointer. 
So he just does so many things well, 27 points in this game. But we know he's not the highest percentage shooter, only four for 12 from three. He did make some big ones, but it just continues to happen that nobody steps up in the big game and nobody even wants it. And and from what I thought, and we can get into him right now, is Kylan Boswell, who kind of, who I thought was having, you know, a a great week or two. He had three straight games with double digits, Mm -hmm. you know, and then this week, both games, you know, he had six and nine points and he really just looked kind of clueless out there to be, to be frank. And he just doesn't seem like he's control in control of the offense. So what do you think about my, my point there? And what do you think about Boswell's troubles, you know, this week? Yeah, I, I completely understand that point, especially from kind of the two weeks that he he's played super well. His turnover margin's been close to zero. Scoring output's been great. Um, it just seemed like he was building a ton of confidence, and and this game just kind of took it out of him in a sense. And and I think the biggest thing was just the matchup. And and you know, the last time they played Washington State, I, don't, I think that was a game he didn't score anything in. Mm-hmm. And just the kind of size that Rice and Wells and the size that Washington State can throw at him and the length, it, it's uncomfortable, I think, especially if you're not used to that kind of play and especially some of their matchup zones that they play. I think that was pretty challenging for him to get in a rhythm. Um, and and that that's a big thing, especially at, at the point guard position. Like, if you don't have confidence, it's it's hard to really get anything done. And, and I would say like late game, like I, I agree with your point about love and he should have the ball in his hands outside of that travel. That pass was a great pass for a, a three pointer that would have put them in the lead. He just went on a slippery spot and took an extra step. Um, that was terrible to see because it probably yeah. would have been a highlight kind of assist and, and a hu- huge, huge play. And they probably would have won the game if that play would uh, yeah, it's, that it's, step it's, it's been. Seems, something I want to add real quick, Jordan. It seems Go like ahead. sometimes that love k- kind of s- does a little too much w- w- when it seems like late in the games, they have to just have more simple sets and kind of plays because to me, it, it you know, in that one, it, that, that just wasn't, he's trying to do something fancy and cool when it, it it just seems like that wasn't necessary. Yeah. Um, yeah, I, I would agree. I think, I don't think you need to do a ton of different from what the normal offensive set is get an off ball and then get an on ball screen and, and let a guard go to work. Um, but yeah, especially, especially in the Washington game too. I, I didn't think, and Boswell got a lot of flack, especially for what they're showing on the broadcast from from Tommy Lloyd getting into his face. And and if anybody saw the Scott Van Pelt interview last night and and Coach Lloyd actually made made a um little comment about Boswell, if you want to talk about that. Yeah. Yeah. I have the I have the quote. Well, let, let me give full context, first of all. Yeah. Arizona went where it was down or Washington State went on an eight oh run. Boswell had some really bad, really poor kind of you know, aggression and just his overall effort on defense wasn't good. Called a timeout and Boswell just looked out of it. He didn't seem like he was involved or wanted to be there. Tommy Lloyd, like you said, he did get in his face, uh, was really heated. And then, as you mentioned, Lloyd said last night on Scott Van Pelt that Boswell texted Lloyd and apologized for what he did. And Lloyd said, it's not necessary. And he said, I'm on you because I love you. And I believe in you. Don't ever forget that. And that was just really assuring, you know, probably really assuring for Boswell. But for me to hear that just means that they are a family. They you know, might, might go through certain things like we saw Andy Reid and Travis Kelsey during the Super Bowl. But in the end, they Tommy Lloyd still wants the best you know, out of Boswell and still believes in him, which is very telling. And yeah, it seems like they had a mix up, but it seems like they're all good in the end, which is good to see. Yeah. And, and I think that was, that was a comment Tommy made last night on, on ESPNs. This team's only going to go as far as the players kind of take them. And I think that's, that's a great thing. Like a player's coach loves his players 
and loves his players enough to tell them to readjust their attitude and readjust their game when they need to. And that can be however, however is, is best for the player to hear that. Sometimes some players need to be screamed at. Nowadays, you're going to see that a lot less just because of, uh, you know, Gen Z. We, we mm-hmm. get in our feels a little bit. That's just the, that's just the way yeah. it is. And, and some people will talk, talk crap or, or say that, the generation soft, but that that's just the way, the way uh, kids minds are nowadays. And so I, I, I didn't take any, any problem with how he reacted because Tommy knows Boswell more than any of us in the media, anybody in that arena, any students that repost on Twitter and say, who's this kid? He's like not even engaged in the game. Tommy Lloyd knows him a lot better than any of us do. And so I have, I have utmost confidence that Tommy, Tommy's, and by doing that, he's putting their relationship above above anything like on the court wise because he knows he can be better. And and that's that's what great coaches do. They inspire their players and they hold them accountable. And mm-hmm. and as much as us and we talk about how how Boswell has had an up and down year, Tom, Tom, Tommy Tommy's levels for him are so much higher than even ours are. So hundred percent. Again, he's young. We're not gonna we're not gonna keep making that excuse. But, but to, Tommy's got it. Tommy knows his guys, and 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 Boswell's growing. No, uh, I totally agree. And yeah, uh, I I'm you know was a little critical a little bit earlier on him too. But yeah, I've loved Boswell since he came to Arizona. I've always loved his potential, what he can mm-hmm. do, and what he's achieved already so far at Arizona. But yeah, it's coming out of a place from law out of love. You know, I do wish the best for Boswell. I want to see Agreed. him play at an elite level because we know he can do that. We know what he did earlier in the season against Duke mm-hmm. and, you know, in the first part. So he's capable of, of that. It just seems like he needs that to be taken or to get out of him. And it seems like Tommy Lloyd knows how to maybe do that. And yeah, I, I would bet that Boswell is going to bounce back this week. And um, there's no better opponent to do that against uh Arizona's rival Arizona State but staying on this game a little bit in the moment you know we built it up before it was the first ranked on ranked opponent for Arizona in conference play the winner of this would take the lead for the conference of the regular season but Jordan that didn't stay true for a while that only Washington didn't last long. was only last in first place all. in the Pac-12 for two days. They lost yep. on Saturday to Arizona State. So that means Arizona has a clear path and kind of own, owns all the cards in kind of clinching their own destiny of being maybe a Pac-12 regular season champion. And they have three more chances to do that. And they have two more this week. And, Jordan, let's get right into it because it's Arizona, Arizona State once again. We know what happened the last time. It was a beatdown. Arizona beat the brakes off of Arizona State. Um, Just over a week ago, won by 45 points at home. But we know the matchups are tougher when it heads down to Tempe in, you know, the devil's home court. So uh, I was there a couple of years ago when Arizona lost and they, they do have a, you know, a pretty decent crowd and especially they do get up for games like this. Um, the game is at 10, it, at 10 PM on the East coast, 8 PM in Arizona on the PAC 12 network. It's on Wednesday night, no Thursday game this week, but w- what do you think of this one? Do you think Arizona state maybe could keep it a little closer or do you think it's going to be another blowout for Arizona? As you guys know by now, we've partnered with BetMGM this season. We'll be using BetMGM lines to make all of our picks, and we'll have special offers for the listeners and the viewers of the Field of 68 as we all get ready for the best month of the year, March Madness. If you haven't signed up for BetMGM yet, you can use the bonus code FIELD150 and you will get $150 in free bets on your first wager with BetMGM regardless of whether or not you win that first bet. Here's the best part. All you need to do is deposit and bet $5 of your hard-earned money. This is how you make it work. 
download the BetMGM app and sign up using the bonus code FIELD150. That's FIELD150. Deposit at least $5 and place your first wager on any game. You will receive up to $150 in bonus bets regardless of the outcome of your bet. Just make sure you use that bonus code FIELD150 when you sign up. And remember, BetMGM is now available in one wallet in select states. As a New Jersey resident, this is super convenient when I have to go cover games in Philly or New York, which happens quite a bit. When you cross state borders, you just log into your existing account and fire away. You don't have to create a new account in each state. It's easy, it's simple, and it's clean. And most importantly, we have some fun stuff coming up for the conference tournaments and for the NCAA tournament. Bet insurance tokens college hoops odds boost and my personal favorite a nice little parlay boost here and there so download the bet mgm app and sign up today big news guys i am thrilled to announce that we have partnered with autograph a company founded by the goat himself tom brady the autograph fandom app gives you access to the best college hoops content fan contests and exclusive rewards like discounted tickets, all for doing the things that diehard fans like you already do, following your favorite team in the news and listening to podcasts just like this one. When Tom, and yes, I am calling him Tom, we're on a first name basis these days, co-founded Autograph, he had one mission in mind, change the fan experience for the better. It works like this. You get all of your college hoops content you want in one place. You get articles from your favorite writers, pods from your favorite hosts, contests from your favorite creators, all on the feeds and the sites that you already enjoy. But instead of having to go to all these different places, it all comes to you in one spot, the autograph fandom map. But here's the best part. The more content that you consume, the higher you rank in the app. As you consider the level up in status on the app, you can unlock unique rewards curated exclusively for you. So download the free autograph app in the app store and use the referral code F68, that's F68, or tap in at the link in the description below or in the podcast app of your choosing to start earning points for doing something as normal as listening to this very podcast. First of all, we're only two weeks of having to deal with the Pac-12 network. I'm so happy about that. Let's get it out. I, I want an easier way to watch this game, and I'm upset. Anyway, with that being said, um, Arizona travels really well for this game. Usually it's called McHale North for a reason. The crowd is never usually 90% ASU. Usually it's somewhere like 75 to 25, and that's depending usually on how good ASU is. Which, ASU's are, not, been, which are not very good. That's what we know. They're they're not very good, but there's also some people in the media that put them in the top ten, in the top twenty five yeah. rankings. <laughs> yeah, I don't know what so, I, that had to be a mistake or something. They probably thought they were voting for Arizona, but which is funny because they were three spots ahead of ASU in their poll. Anyway, <laughs> um, anyway, this team, this this ASU team is is quite a bit different at home, um, as you said. Washington State was the team that they beat on Saturday, which helped Arizona to get back a half-game lead in the Pac-12. Um, and one of the biggest things we talked about last time these teams match up was, was ASU's inefficient three-point shooting. On Saturday, they went 6 of 14, over 40% from three. So if they can shoot that well on, on Wednesday, it's gonna be it's gonna be harder for, for Arizona than it was the first trip. That's for sure. But I also know that Caleb Love and the boys, they get up in intense environments. And I, I think I think they'll win this game probably pretty handedly, at least three or four possessions. That's that's probably where I'm at. And that's just some of the emotion, especially with how much fun they were having the last time they played in, in McHale against them and throwing down the forks down in front of the bench. That was awesome. I feel like they're gonna they're gonna they're gonna wave. Wave those, uh, wave those coats uh, going up to Tempe, doing the same exact thing. Yeah, and, you know, one may say that since Arizona did, you know, beat them as bad as you can just over a week ago that, you know, they might not get up for this game, but they'll get up for this game. They'll get up. Boswell's yeah. going to be excited for this one to get back on track. The whole Arizona team, you know, they did win on um, 
on Saturday. But, you know, after losing to Washington State, they want to get back on track. They want to build totally upon that. Um, but getting – so so you think Arizona is going to win. I think they're going to win too. I think they're going to win by 15 points. It, I don't think they're going to win by 30 or 40 in this one. Yeah, I think it will be closer hopefully early in the game because some of these games, I'll be real – they make it tough to watch when Arizona is just beating and just killing these some of these teams. So that's why it was good that it was a close one last Thursday. But how many do you think Arizona is going to win by? Um, I probably put put it like eight points. And I think I think the biggest thing for Arizona is going to be winning the the rebound margin. And I think that was one of their recipes the last time they played. And when they played Washington State on Saturday, they were. Both teams are dead even, right at 35 rebounds. Um, the last time these two teams played, Arizona out rebounded them by 18. So I I think if if they can stay clear of maybe five or more rebounds, I, I'm pretty I'm pretty I'm pretty solid on Arizona leaving Tempe with a win. I'd I'd put it probably around eight eight though seven and a half eight points. Gotcha. So we both think Arizona will win, but moving on, Arizona has a matchup. At home on Saturday against Oregon. It's at noon local time, 2 p.m. on the East Coast. And this game will be at the McHale Center. But out, unlike Arizona State, the last game there, the game against Oregon in Eugene a couple weeks ago was a close one. Arizona did come out on top, one by nine points. But... Arizona didn't have their best performances in that game and they still came out on top, but that was, that was a great and elite Caleb love game. We saw him score 36 in that one, which is just unbelievable. Arizona did hit 10 three pointers in that one and held at, uh, at Oregon to under 40% from deep. How do you see this one playing out for the second time this year? Um, I, I would say, I think it's probably going to be similar. Um, I'm excited to watch, uh, Dante and Balo in the post again. I think that's going to be a huge thing for this team going forward, especially with just some of the dynamic centers that are in the college game. And they're likely to see a matchup against a team with a very good, if not dominant center in March. So I think that'll, that'll be, that'll be something to circle, especially with, with Dante and Balo both having Molly origins. I think that's that's a cool little matchup. Um, but I, I feel like it'll probably go pretty similarly. Um, I think probably the biggest thing will be to see how Oregon is shooting. If Oregon's shooting well, it, it can be probably a lot more closer of a game than it was the time up in Oregon. But I do expect Arizona to win probably by about two possessions, right at four, four, four or five points. Yeah, I think Arizona... I think they'll win by, I'm going to say six points. They're going to get the job done. I think they're going to get back on track, win both of these games um, this week, kind of put the loss in the rear view mirror. And yeah, like you said, this should be a good, exciting battle. Oregon does have some some very good players in Cousinard and Bartholomew and Dante. So will be a fun matchup. I hope it's, you know, a little closer. But Jordan, before we leave today, I wanted to, since we're so close, of the the regular season being over, the postseason is on the horizon. Arizona is projected as a one seed right now. The ranked number six in the latest projected AP poll, but most of the recent uh, brackets that I've seen have listed Arizona at the one seed in the West. What do you think of kind of where they're being seeded and the end of the season overall? I. Oh, uh, I think it's hard, especially with um, with just the landscape of the game. And, and we talk about this every other week of just there's not really a clear team. And there's a lot of teams that just seem in the middle of the mud pit. But I think when you look at them from like a broad scope or even look at their team specifically, there's a lot of teams that just like don't match up well against anybody. And I think Arizona is actually one of the few teams that I feel like do have multiple ways to win. Mm -hmm. And they, they do have a good, good mix of athleticism, experience, shooting, um, getting to the rim, 
and they they got a little bit of everything and they can win in just a multitude of ways and so as tommy said this team's only going to go as far as as the players can take it um i agree I, and i go ahead sorry no you go ahead um actually one of my friends he was like sending me some uh videos last night of this guy breaking down some some teams based on like where he would gauge them of of where a majority of people would assume that they would finish this season going into the tournament. And I gave a few teams to where I, I feel like the, this group of teams probably has the best ability to win a championship of the top ones. And I had, I had Houston. They just got back into the number one seed or number one ranking um, so far this year, Houston, Arizona, North Carolina, Tennessee, and Auburn. I feel like those teams are just in a different area than everybody else and a majority of that very similar to Arizona is there's so many different ways that these teams can win they're not they're not bad defensive teams by any means they're not necessarily great but they're good enough to get the job done and their offense is good enough to to complement their defense yeah my my team's a little bit that I I kind of in no particular order I know yeah no number one but I kind of have Houston Purdue UConn and then Arizona kind of as the fourth. I, I, but yeah, I agree. I struggle to kind of come to the re- realization that one of these teams can rally off six wins in a row. No, someone has to do it. But Arizona, it just, I just don't know if they can win mm. six games in a row because they've just, they, yeah, they've shown it. They've done it twice this season. But it just seems like every time they get rolling and they win a couple, they lose one. And it's just been this roller coaster of a season. And not just them, but a lot of other teams yeah, have been just sure. like that this season. And that's what hopefully will make for an exciting, another exciting Final Four and March Madness tournament here in the next couple of weeks. But yeah, I, I think Arizona can get there. I just think, I, I do think the Pac 12 tournament will be a great. Uh, thing for this Arizona team to gain their confidence back because we know when they go into there in that building in uh, the T-Mobile Arena in Vegas that they are elite and they've been that for the last a lot of years at this point. So I think we'll see, but yeah, well, it's going to be an interesting road to the Final Four. Yeah, and just and just in March, like context is has a lot to do with it too. Matchups can be everything. 100%. If, if Purdue is matched up against a team like FDU from last year that's just super long, like if if Purdue was matched up against Washington State, I would pick Washington State to upset them just by how much they can space the floor and make Zach Eady non-existent on the defensive end. Teams that can do that, like they there's just huge problems for Purdue. And it's been that way throughout Matt Painter's entire entire time there. He's only made one Elite Eight. And the only reason that really happened is because he had one of the best scorers in college basketball that year, Carson Edwards. And they lost to a Tennessee team that year with Admiral Schofield and Grant Williams, now with the Charlotte Hornets, who just spaced the floor. And they got their center out of the game. And they expected Carson Edwards to just outscore everybody. And that didn't work. And that there's just a, like a recipe for Purdue. So if yeah. Purdue gets some favorable matchups where they're playing teams that have true fives that don't shoot at all, they could go, they could go super far, but I think it's more likely that they don't get a great matchup and they could lose in the first round again, like they did last year, rather than make a final four or make an NCAA championship run. Yeah. And so, and so that's a huge thing is just, it's matchups and even under seedings too. Like in 2017, when Arizona was matched up against Buffalo, who was a 15 seed at that time, who had, who had lost like, I think they lost like less than four games. Yeah, they were mid major, but their guard play was insane. Yeah, but that's, they were yeah, heavily under seeded. That, yeah, that's college basketball. You know, yeah. a, a lot of the mid majors are lower seeds, but they get matched up with an overall better team, better conference, but. Yep. Yeah, I totally agree. Matchups make styles make, you know, games and matchups will make it. And that's what makes the tournament one of the best sporting events of the entire year. 
Get I'm goosebumps wolf. thinking about it, man. Yeah, Getting I can't goosebumps wait. thinking about it. I can't wait. There's only two weeks left of the regular season. Arizona has four more games, two more this week, two next week. But I want to thank everybody for tuning in today to Bear Down Ballers. I'm Ryan Wall. He's Jordan Pollock. Follow us all next at Bear Down AZ Pod, and we'll 